What's growing in your life? That's the title of today's Daily Dose. There's been a lot of rain lately here in Arizona. It's been refreshing. We've needed it so desperately. Isn't God good? <laughs> He's so good. He knows what we need and He knows when we need it. But here's what I've realized about rain. It makes things grow. Duh, right? Of course it does. But, but what I mean is it makes everything grow. The grass, the plants, and of course, the weeds. My mind quickly went to the words of Jesus in Matthew 5, 45, where he said that God makes the rain fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. Even the unrighteous weeds get the blessing of the rain. And they take full advantage of it. I mean, woo, do they ever. I mean, I've been going at the roundup and everything lately. But anyway, so here's the principle I want to talk about. What gets water will grow. Another way to look at it, what we water is going to grow. So the question is, what are you watering? Let me ask you that again. What are you watering? Check this out. Whoever sows, whoever sows to please the flesh, another way to say that would be uh, whoever waters the flesh, it says from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, or we could say whoever waters the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. That's a paraphrase of Galatians 6, verse 8. So again, what we water grows. What we sow, we will reap. And what we feed gets stronger. Maybe you've heard the fictitious story about two dogs who were engaging in a fight. A curious child asked, which one of these dogs will win the fight? And the answer came, well, it's the one I choose to feed the most. What we sow, we will reap. What we water, will grow. What we feed is going to win in our lives. Every day, we water something. Every day, we are feeding something. Romans 8 puts it in the context of the flesh and the spirit. We're either pouring into our flesh and satisfying it, helping our flesh get stronger, or we're pouring into our spirit, and our spirit is getting stronger. Here's what that looks like. Romans 8, 5 says, Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. So again, look. If we water the weeds, they're going to grow. And, and here's what we know. Weeds and then their thorns, they can often take over. They can even choke out the good stuff, choke the life out of the plants, out of us and our walk with the Lord. Matthew 13, 22 speaks about that. So we have to be careful. What are we watering? What are we feeding? Maybe you're asking this question now, but, but how do we water and feed our spirit? What does that look like? How do we come alive in our spirit and, and thus truly be who God created us to be? Well, God's given us some ways to do that. Our spirit comes alive and stays alive as we spend time with God. That's the big thing. As we spend time with God, our spirit comes alive. And as we allow Him to fill us with Himself, that's the Holy Spirit, baptize us in Him, fill and refill us, that's how we come alive, in the Spirit. There's no other way. There's no shortcut. In Him, in God, we live and move and have our being. That's Acts 17, 28. And, and this is not a one-time decision or a one-time filling either. It's a constant life of refilling, of watering and feeding. It's an everyday thing. We feed our spirit by taking in the nutrients of His Word, by worshiping Him through prayer. All of these are acts of worship. They're, act, they're actually ways to spend time with God, to find intimacy with the living God, listening to Him, hearing His voice. See, getting God in us, that's what we need. It's time with God, that's what we need. This is how we feed our spirit and how we truly come alive. This is how we be alive in Christ as new creations. So, here's what God desires for us. It says this, that they will 
be like a tree planted by the water. This is what God wants for us. So we would be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fail, fails to bear fruit. That's Jeremiah 17, 8. Who is the they <laughs> they're talking about here? Who is it that the they that... that um, who are going to be like that tree planted by the water. Who, who will have no worries and always bear fruit? I want to be that person, amen? You with me on that? Well, in the previous verse, we find the answer. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. Jeremiah 17, 7. So one more question. Where have you planted your life? Is your life, your desires, your time, your resources, your worldview, your perspective, is it planted in the Lord? Or are you planted in the shallow, lifeless ground of this world? Have you planted your life amongst the weeds and the thorns? Or have you planted your life in Christ Jesus? It's time to say no to all that other stuff. It's time to be rooted in Jesus, to plant your life on Christ. After all, Jesus is our living water. Be blessed.